So who did you grow up with? You had brothers, sisters, mother. Yeah, I had, uh, you know, I have, I have a lot of siblings. My father has about eleven kids. My mother has, you know, they have four together. My mother has five total, but they have four together. I grew up with uh, four siblings. I'm the second next to the oldest, and uh, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was a rough neighborhood. Yes, yeah, very rough. You gotta understand, per capita, Tulsa is like I think third on the nation in murder. So yeah, you know, for our size, we it was, we're pretty bad. Pretty bad. There's a lot going on here. But I'm I'm known. My family was known. My father's side of the family, you know, not to not to brag or boast because I'm not proud of it. It's just a, <laughs> a long line of career criminals. So you know. Yeah. What kind of kid were you? I mean, I was, you know, I was pretty. I was a good kid. I mean, coming up, I was. I had my little stage where I was bad, obviously. But I was always uh, uh, different. I wasn't like everyone else. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I, I, I read, I read a lot of books. Even as a as a young kid, I've always been. I've always loved boxing. I've always loved fighting. I've pretty much always, you know, stayed to myself. So you know, mm -hmm. I wasn't like everyone else. Yeah. Who who got you interested in boxing? No, actually, my father he was a fighter from the age I started going to the gym with him when I was about two years old. Two. Yeah. Wow. You grew right up in there. Oh, yeah. Literally. So you were good all the time, right? Always good. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember the first time walking to the gym, you know, how uh, intense the sparring session seemed to me, you know, being when, you know, I remember being four or five years old and watching the sparring session and how intense, how intense they seemed and, you know, the noise, the, the grunting and the noise that they would make. And I remember hearing the speed bag going. The jump rope going, the music playing, someone punching a heavy bag, and then to me it all sounded like music. And hearing the trainers talking, I mean that was amazing to me. I was intrigued by it, you know, at such a young age. Even even the smell of it, I, I, I still it was just vivid. I can still remember the smell of the gym. Hmm. And you were a five-time Oklahoma state champion. How'd that right. feel winning your first one? Uh, you know, it was good, man. It, it, it was good the first time, and then after the second and third time, you realized that it wasn't very a, a very lofty goal, given where you're living at in Oklahoma. <laughs> and, you know, had I, had I been in, like, you know, Detroit, New York, someone like that, then there's something to talk about. So I, don't, <laughs> I don't really brag about that much, but I did, I did win the National Golden Gloves, so, you know, like mm -hmm. I said, I'm for six for still. Yeah, 2002, right? Yeah, I was the first person since, this goes to show you about Oklahoma, I was the first person since 1956 to win it. Oh, wow. Yeah. And how'd that feel to win that one? It was great, man. It was a great accomplishment because I know I had a... Uh, when you're in the Nationals, you know that you can, you know, you can do something and be a world champion as a professional. And I, I know I was did the same thing that a lot of my heroes had done, you know, Roy Jones, Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Robinson. You did something that they did, so it made, it made you feel good, you know. Yeah. You felt like you had some form of a commonality, commonality with them because, you you know, you've done the same thing they, they've done. Yeah, really. And who did you beat in, in that tournament? Did you see anyone that... Anyone Curtis. Beat? Curtis Stevens. That's who I beat. Mm -hmm. And you also won the National Pal. You were a silver medalist there? I was a silver medalist, yeah. I thought I won. I thought I won. It was a close fight. I fought a friend of mine. It was a close fight. But I thought I won the fight. But we were doing Olympic scoring. You know how subjective that is. Mm -hmm. And yeah. did, you, did you try to make the Olympic team at all? Uh, somewhat, but mentally, I don't think I was ready. You know, I, I didn't have a lot of fights like mm -hmm. a lot of the guys did then from Oklahoma. Mentally, I don't think I was ready for, mm -hmm. for that. So it was the reason why I didn't, why I didn't make it. And what was your amateur record when you were done? 65 and 6. That was great, man. And uh, what made you decide to turn pro at that time that you turned pro? Uh, I, I was, at the time that I turned pro, I mean, it was... People were saying, maybe you should wait around, man, and try, try for the next Olympic team. You know, I was about 21, 22 years old. It was just time for me to go pro. I didn't want to be one of those guys that overstayed my welcome, even though I didn't have a lot of the fights the other guys did. I didn't want to be, you know, fucking 40 years old trying to, mm -hmm. <laughs> trying to make the Olympic team. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so who trained you for your first fight? My first pro fight? Yeah, who was your trainer? Uh, my first professional fight was a guy by the name of uh, Ronnie Warrior. Mm -hmm. Things didn't things didn't work out with us. He wasn't. Uh, I mean, he, he had a lot of knowledge about boxing. I mean, he boxed. You know, he fought Julian Jackson mm -hmm. uh, back in the day. But he just he, he wasn't very de dedicated. And uh, sometimes, you know, some people evolve and some people devolve and uh, regress. That's it. And where'd you get the name Ghost Dog? Did you have it right away? Yes, you know, my brother, my brother who's in, in my training team. He came up. He came up with the name for me. And what's it mean? But that's really, really, really my nickname is Sweetness, and people call me Ghost Dog. Because we have a thing, and when 
I'm in the, when I'm sparring or training, when you say use the term like get ghost, that means to get out of the way and be gone, like vanish real quick. Mm-hmm. And uh, and when you say you dogging somebody, it's like you're jumping on them, just getting on, blah, 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 boom, and all of a sudden you get ghost and you're gone when they when they try to retaliate. That's why that's how we came up with the name Ghost Dog because I, I would do that a lot in sparring. Okay. So it's got a meaning. Of course. And do you remember who you fought first and what the result was and where it was? Yeah, I fought a guy named, uh, actually his name is Michael Dykes, but he's listed as Robert Dykes. His name is Michael Dykes. I think I knocked him out in 33 seconds of the first round of the Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola Arena in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. It was on the same card that uh, Ben Phillips fought Sean Bay Mitchell and uh, Jeff Lacey fought Ross, Ross Thompson. Wow, that was a big card. Was there a lot of people there when you... Uh... Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a big venue, but it was packed, and, it, and, and it, the, ambi- the ambiance, it was nice. It, it seemed, it seemed uh, like a like a event of great importance, being that you had a guy like Sean B. Mitchell and Jeff Lacey in the same car. So, yeah, it was a pretty big event, especially for Oklahoma. Yeah, how nervous were you going into your first fight, all those people? I wasn't. Uh, I was a little bit. I mean, when, when I got, actually, I, when I was in the dressing room, I was a little nervous, but that, once I started walking through the ring, I mean, it just faded away, and I was ready to get down to business. Mm-hmm. How'd you feel after the fight, winning your first pro fight? Uh, I was elated. I was happy. You know, you start thinking, thinking ahead of yourself a little bit when you're that young. You win your first pro fight, you think, "Yo, oh, man, I'm right there from world, right there, ready for a world title." And you realize you're probably in between, oh, five, seven, eight, nine years away. You know, but you know, <laughs> you don't, you don't, you don't, you're thinking different. Like, oh man, I can take on anybody, but you really can't. You just, it's all relative. You're fighting guys that you're just supposed to beat mm-hmm. okay. at that time. Yeah. Yeah. And you fought Ola at the lobby real early. I think yes. in both, yes. both of your pros. Very, he's a very good fighter. He's a very good fighter. The, to date, he's one of, if not the best, one of the best fighters I fought, man. Because you know he, he had, I noticed that I had more natural ability, ability than him, natural mm-hmm. talent, but he had more skill than I had, being that he had been sparring with guys like James Tony and other fighters. Yeah, and you guys would have made way more money if you just waited. <laughs> man. Exactly, but I think honestly, I think that was someone was trying to you know get me beat or one of us beat or whatever. I mean, you don't you don't do those kind of pick them fights. Let's see what happened fights that early in a guy's career. You don't do that. Yeah, you you had a lot of tough fights, man. You you were fighting guys with, I mean, yeah, match match tough early on. Right. And uh, you were on ESPN in just your seventh fight. How'd that right. feel fighting with the cameras there and knowing you were being right. seen by hundreds of thousands of people? How'd that feel? It felt good, man. I knew uh, everybody at home was uh, watching, watching me. I knew my, you know, I knew my lady was at home watching me. I knew my kids would watch me. Everybody, you know, it, it, it was exciting. Any any nerves there? Nervous at all? Yes, I was. I was nervous because you know I was what you call a uh, swing out. Mm-hmm. And I thought, you know, that you don't have a set time to come out. They say, okay, you got to come out at this time. They say, Green, get ready. You got to be ready in five minutes. You say, okay. At the beginning of the show, they told us to be ready. We didn't end up fighting, probably. Then they said, well, now, now, now you're going to fight at the end. And I'll never forget, even funny Mendoza threw his elbow out of the shoulder out of something. They said, Green, you're up. We had no time to warm up, so we had to just go straight out there. We thought we were going to fight at the end of the show. Even funny Mendoza was, uh, he, I, can't, I can't recall who he, was, who he was fighting, but he hurt his elbow. He threw his elbow out, so he had to, uh, so we had to go out, go ahead and go out. But, you know, we, we knocked out James Green, I believe, in the fifth, fifth round. Mm-hmm. And in November, 04, you fought ATN Whitaker. Real experience yeah. guy. Did you feel yeah, his yeah. experience on that fight, or was it just too quick? You made quick uh, a little bit in the first round, a little bit. I mean, he was real uh, crafty and cagey. Knew how to protect himself. I watched him when he fought, uh, what's the guy's name, Charles Brewer. Mm-hmm. I watched that fight of him, and I knew he was cagey. Knew how to protect himself, so I knew I had to... Crack, crack him and give him something really quick, you know, so I couldn't, so I wouldn't be able to feel too much of that experience later in the fight. Yeah. Then you fought Donnie McCrary. What do you remember about yeah, Donnie yeah, McCrary? Yeah, yeah. A, a former spawn partner of mine. And I remember being in the ring. I remember I felt a little, a little overtrained for that fight. Mm-hmm. And I remember I wasn't up for the fight. I didn't take Donnie light at all because I knew Donnie could present a problem because he had a very, very panicky, scary style. Whenever I got close to him, he was just throw, 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 and spawn. So I wasn't really up for the fight. And I was like, man, you know, this, this is dangerous. I'm fighting a former, former spawn partner. I'm not really up for it. And I remember, I can't remember which round, but I remember I dropped him with a body shot. And me thinking, I thought he was going to stay down. He didn't stay down. And I remember I just walked in. I remember I made a mistake. I stepped with my right foot in front of
down and my left foot, instead of my left foot in front of the boxing stand, he threw a left foot and caught me right on the chin and hurt me and dropped me. Mm. Yeah. And so what do you remember about that? Do you remember everything or did you kind of... Yeah, I remember everything. I remember everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I remember like two getting hit, boom, 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 thinking damn, damn, damn. I said, oh man, I'm, I'm not... He dropped me. I got knocked down. I remember thinking that. Yeah. And then you fought Anthony Bonsante. What, what, oh, yeah. What about that fight? Any memories there? <laughs> yeah, I, I, that was one of the times I, I prepared my best for a fight. I mean, I, I love my preparation for that fight. It was great. We were supposed to fight at first, and the fight got uh, canceled due to he said he hurt his hand or cut. I can't recall. But I felt good about that fight because I remember him. Uh, he had gained a lot of notoriety and popularity from being on the boxing show, the contender, the contender boxing mm-hmm. show. And I actually I saw him fight before when I was when I was young, early in my career, because we fought on the same card when he beat uh, what's the guy, the Hispanic guy? I can't remember his name. Famous fighter, El Torito. What's his first? I can't remember. Mm-hmm. Tony Ayala. He mm-hmm. beat him for the IBA World Title, and I remember I was there and. Bazzanti came to my dressing room. I never forget, he had his belt on, he was drinking a beer. I was like, man, this guy drinks, he's a fighter, man. If I ever fought him, I, I was thinking, if I ever fought, fought him, I'd hurt him. And, and lo and behold, I did. <laughs> this is crazy, drinking a beer already. Can't wait to get yeah. out of the arena. <laughs> yeah, couldn't wait. <laughs> then, then you fought Emmett Linton in a test at that time. What was that one like? Yeah, that was a short notice fight. I never forget. My family and I, we had went to Six Flags and uh, Austin, not Austin, in the San Antonio, and I came and I got back, and then Monday or Tuesday, they called me for the fight and asked if they want to fight in two weeks. And Emmett Linton was a good fighter, cagey guy, didn't have a lot of losses, knocked out former world champion Donald Curry, they asked if they want to fight, I said, yeah, go ahead, I'll fight him. Mm-hmm. Short notice, southpaw, yeah. yeah. And, and what do you remember about the fight, you, itself? I mean, he was just, yeah, I felt his experience. He was just a cagey guy. I was ill prepared, but, you know, I knew I had to pull a fight out and I won, you know. Mm-hmm. And what about the Jerzon Ravello fight? Jerzon Ravello. That was, a, and that was my, like, my redemption and, and my own personal redemption for the Emmett Emily Linton fight since I didn't look my best. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wanted to, you know, because I was due to the short notice, I wanted to get back in the ring again, and they called me about fighting Jerzon Ravello, which I knew, I knew, I knew it was all a little game, but they saw me looking bad against him. Linton. They thought they could seize the moment, take advantage of it. So I went ahead and accepted the fight. And I knew I would knock Jerson out. I went to the fight with a, with a couple of injuries, but I still knew I could get him. Yeah. What, what kind of management did you have taking so many fights on short notice? Did you? Man, it was just, you know, I, I stayed in shape, and I didn't have, really have a manager. I had a promoter, and they were presenting to me, like, what do you think of this? I mean, it was all up to me. Mm-hmm. It was all up to me. I said, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and do it. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do it. You know, that, it, was, it was just up to me. But certain fights, I would. Take. I was trying, that was me, I was a younger fighter, trying to, you know, make my way in the game, starting to get a lot of nor- notoriety, starting to get known, that's why I took those fights. Mm-hmm. And then you went to Puerto Rico, was that the first time you were in Puerto Rico? Uh, yes, yes, that's the fight I lost, I was, uh, I was extremely ill for that fight. Mm. I was, uh, being, being a, I was feeling the way I was feeling, it was very hard for my mind to, mind to get, get into the right place. You know, I had, I had in the back of my mind, I had the, the way I was feeling, and I knew I said, "Man, I'm getting over the top fighter, running number one middleweight, and I feel like this." So you know, it was, it's kind of hard to focus, kind of hard to fight when you're feeling like that. Mm-hmm. And what, what was your problem? What, what were you feeling? Uh, you know, uh, my my colon. I, you know, I don't know if you know, I had 85 percent of my colon removed yeah. uh, a few months after the fight. My colon was actually paralyzed, so I wasn't able to absorb uh, water, electri- electrolytes. Developed a temporary heart murmur, <laughs> everything. It felt like I it felt like I had a Charlie horse over my whole body. I could barely move. I remember I remember talking to Dad Judah in Puerto Rico and blacking out a couple mm-hmm. of times. You know, yeah. Hmm. What, what, do you remember, like, what do you remember about Edison Miranda being in the ring? Yeah, actually, actually, Edison's a friend of mine. We talk. We stay in the same house a lot of times when I would go down to Florida. Uh, he, I mean, he was he was a strong guy, good good puncher. We sparred. We sparred uh, since then. You know. Hmm. Did you know him before that too? Not really. Not mm-hmm. really. Does he speak English? Very little. Mm-hmm. And you heard about his power. Were you nervous going into that one? No, no, no. I was like I said, the only thing that bothered me. I, I mean, we we both have like I said, I'm a harder puncher than he is. Mm-hmm. We both have worked the pads with some of the same people. But was, the only thing I was nervous about was, was me feeling that way. Mm-hmm. And how does sparring go after that? 
what do you what do you do in sparring with Edison Miranda? Uh, we, we we work pretty well together. We work the last time it was kind of tip tip for tat. The last time we sparred was kind of tip for tat. I was uh in the process of uh weight you know weight uh draining weight losing weight and after he he weighed about two ten. Hmm. It was kind of tip for tat. Yeah. Now how'd you feel after that fight suffering your first loss to lose that All right. Actually I was just ready to the first thing I did, I uh, went to the doctor and got myself checked out, found found out what was wrong and uh that was that was my first order of business. But I, I was just I just wanted to help him get back in the ring, I wanted revenge. That that was it. I wasn't really just so downtrodden and sad, like, Oh, I lost. I know what happened. Mm-hmm. You know, the grace have lost. So I, I didn't really let it just break my spirit or anything. I just wanted to hurry up and get back in the ring. Mhm. And you found out right after the uh, the fight that you had a problem. After that fight, Excuse me? it was right after that fight you found out you had the problem. Actually, I knew I had a, somewhat of a problem, but they couldn't pinpoint it before then. I was instructed not to fight, to be okay. honest. Yeah. And it was be- so. It was before your fight with Daryl was you had the surgery, right? You right on the, the, the Monday, <laughs> that Monday after the fight. Okay, so you fought Daryl Woods still knowing you were sick. Yeah, yeah, I fought him at a higher weight, though, see. Remember, I fought Edison at 162. Mm-hmm. And having a conditioning coupled with losing that weight was really hard. Yeah. How'd you feel uh, in that fight with Daryl Woods, though? You felt pretty good? I felt okay. I felt okay. I knew I could. I mean, I knew if I could. That's why I'm glad I got it over early. I said, okay, I just got to catch Daryl real quick. Mm-hmm. I said, because I didn't know what kind of uh, effect that the surgery would have. You know, the doctor would tell you, oh, you'll be fine. I said, man, I need to get a fight in before I have the surgery because I don't know what's going to be the, the end result after. If something's not going to go right or whatever, so I wanted to have a fight. Mm-hmm. And then you fought again in October. Why so fast after such a serious surgery? Believe it or not, man, I, because it, it, to me it's all mental. You know, two-thirds of being sick, tired, or sleepy is it, two-thirds mental. And they, the doctor was like, well, you got to take off this this long after, Matt. But it's a no lie. A week after my surgery, I went and ran one mile. Two weeks after that, I was back in the gym. Jeez. Making, <laughs> making serious comebacks like Crazy, <laughs> you know. Like, I remember uh, Willie Pep had a had a airplane accident or a helicopter accident, <laughs> but I don't think anyone came back so soon after such a major surgery. Having eighty five percent of your colon come up, yeah, that's crazy. Who okayed that, man? <laughs> you said what? Who okayed that for you? Uh, me. I mean, like you know, I, I was ready. I wanted to do it. Yeah. Now, how about your fight with Sherman Davis? Sherman Davis, uh, that was just, you know, another Simple. fight getting back into it. Mm-hmm. What about Ruben Williams? Yeah, that was another, just another fight, Ruben Williams. I mean, I've, I've been watching Ruben for a while. We had talked about fighting before, talked about fighting before, and it never happened, so I was glad it happened when it did. Mm-hmm. So, so you felt great after the surgery fighting those two comeback fights after? Believe it or not, I felt okay. I felt better. But it took my body maybe two or three years to completely... Hmm. Feel the way it needed to feel. I hmm. felt better than I did prior to that. Okay. And then you fought experienced guy Carl Daniels. What do you remember about that fight? Right, I, that was after that little suspension I had. I remember feeling off because it was on some. It was on short notice. I felt off. I didn't feel good for that fight at all. I stopped him. I believe in the eighth round, but I, I didn't feel good for that fight at all. Mm-hmm. And why were you suspended for what? Uh, it was a fight with Anton Eccles I was supposed to fight, and the guy who was my promoter at the time, I told him two weeks before the fight that I wasn't fighting, I wouldn't, that I wasn't, my trainer called him, told him I wasn't fighting, I wasn't feeling very well. Mm-hmm. Yep. And he got word that I had talked with another, a manager, that he thought, he thought uh, I was down here, because he and I didn't have a contract, so he thought that I was going to sign with another promoter or something, which was which I wasn't. Mm-hmm. Another promoter did consult with me and talk to me, and I, you know, I declined. So then after that, he uh, he wanted to talk to me. I didn't. I, I, I didn't talk to him. I wasn't, I wasn't in the position to talk to him. So he he assumed that I was trying to sound that other promoter. So he called. He, so he didn't call ESPN and inform them that I was uh, not fighting. Mm-hmm. So he made it seem like that they got to the way in, and I just and I just wasn't there. I didn't show up. Mm-hmm. So the commission suspended me for that. Yeah. So after your fight with Carl Daniels, that. You weren't feeling so good on that fight. How'd you feel for the Carlos De Leon fight? Carlos I felt Leon. magnificent. I had a good long training camp. I got uh, ample sparring in. Everything worked right. Everything was perfect. Right. And then you fought unbeaten Tarvis Sims. First title yeah. try. 
How would you feel going into that fight for your first title? Again, I didn't feel good for that fight either. No? Yeah, like I, like I said, it was just kind of, it was always kind of topsy turvy with me, man, with the condition that I had and everything. My body was changing, and uh, I was supposed to be fighting Victor Ogunov, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, a few couple, a couple of weeks before, they said you're fighting a southpaw. I'm like, man, I haven't had any southpaw spawn. Why am I fighting a southpaw? Mm. And they were like, well, they were like, well, you, you, you're fighting a southpaw. I'm like, what the hell? Mm. And then tell me about the fight itself. Was it a difficult fight? No, not at all. But it wasn't, you know, I mean, I, I, I won, what, nine out of the ten rounds, eight out of the ten rounds, it wasn't very difficult. And how did it feel afterwards winning your first title? How did that feel to see the belt? I felt good, man. I felt good. I was just looking looking to bigger and better things. Mm-hmm. And how did you get the call to join the Super Six? Well, there's been a lot going on because of Jermaine Taylor. Actually, and that, that whole thing, that whole situation was messed up. They, uh, they called and said that, uh, I had to fight Saki Obika to get in the Super Six. I said, fine, so I started training. I had been in the training camp for about four and a half, almost four weeks. They called me and said, Bika's out, you're in. Mm. And I said, well, I hadn't fought in 10 months prior to this, but, you know, so I said, well, can I keep the date? So give me, have me being sharp, going into a fight with a fight like Andre Ward, and they said, no. So I had to go home, come back to training camp, start training for Ward, I'm training for Ward. Ward pulls out. That he's hurt his knee. I go home again, come back, start training for Ward. You know, I picked up a little weight, went back home, I started training for Ward, and um, three weeks before the fight, I get on the scale, I'm about 26, 27 pounds over. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, what the hell, what the hell's going on? What the hell's going on? You know what, this is, this is not cool, this is right, something's not right, man. You know, it's like my body was betraying me, so. I killed myself, literally almost killed myself to make the way for the fight. So I knew going into that fight I wasn't prepared. Mm-hmm. And, and plus, the, you know, the three training camps didn't help either. Yeah. 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 What did you think? What did you see in Andre that night? Did you see anything that impressed you? No, I didn't see no, no, That was everything I expected. I, I just wasn't right. I thought, I mean, I knew everything he was trying to do. It was everything I expected. And he was a smart fighter. He was very cautious the first two rounds, but after the third round, actually his trainer picked up on it. He saw me at the, he saw me at the press conference. He knew I'd be weak. After the first two, he was cautious the first two rounds. And after the third round, after I was I was wore down. Mm-hmm. That, that's when he started. That's when he started uh, pressuring me and just stayed on me because you know I didn't have the strength to, to really do much. Mm-hmm. And his trainer told you that too. No, no, no I, his trainer said it on one of the super six. Yeah. The thing about the super six, uh, you, you can hear him in between rounds talking. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then you fought a legend, old warrior Glenn Johnson, in your next fight. Yeah, in the Super same, 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 same thing with him. I was training for Kessler, preparing for Kessler. Now, this situation is tricky. Well, now, what I'm telling you is facts. There's no speculation or whatever. I'm not, you know, they told me that uh, I was training for Kessler. They told me Kessler's out, has a problem with his eye. We'll find you another opponent. So I'm, I'm waiting. They, they, they said they contacted Steelix and they said no. Then they said they contacted, this, I can't remember the other guy's name, that uh, they let Butte fight. They said no, he wasn't good enough to fight in the tournament or something like that. Brian McGee. Mm-hmm. They said no, not him. And then they said, okay, tournament's over. It's something to do with Darrell. When I remember him pulling out. Tournament's over. We tie, you know, you, uh, we're going to go go ahead and go straight to the semifinals with the guys we already have in it. Alan, since we owe you a fight, you get to fight Jurgen Brommer at light heavyweight for his belt. I said fine, so I'm sitting. You know, I'm, I'm not training in the meantime. I'm still fine. I'm putting on. I'm putting on weight. I'm feeling good. I said, okay, this is cool. A few weeks passed, and they called me. Mm-hmm. Tournament's back on. You're fighting Glenn Johnson. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, I've been gaining a little weight. Now I got to fight Glenn Johnson. So I got to go back and do another training camp. So I'm training for Glenn Johnson, and I felt okay. I felt better than I did for Johnson than I did Ward, but I still. I mean, I knew going into the fight, I wasn't 100 percent. But I still, you know, I, I still felt like I had enough to win that fight. Mm-hmm. And how do you feel? And like I said, like I said, this is not, this is not, this is a fact. This is not a speculation. No one's used to it. I'm just telling you what happened. Yeah. There's a reason for everything, Alan. <laughs> you know? Everything yeah. has a reason. Yeah. yeah, everything has a reason. Yeah, people can, people don't know how to distinguish the difference between a reason and an excuse, you know? So. Yeah. 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 I get it, man. And yeah. how do you feel at that point now losing two in a row? The first time I, ever. I, Damn, I said, man, it's time for me to, I said, you know, I'm tired of this super middleweight shit. It's time for me to go up to light heavyweight. I can't fight super middleweight no more. Mm-hmm. 
Light heavyweight is my natural weight. That's what I need to be at. That's what I need to do. That's what I'm going to do. But even then, the fight I fought after that, I fought a fight against Craig Gandy at a, basically a cruiserweight. I knocked him out in the second round. But then I had to fight a fight with uh, Sebastian Demers at like 170. I'm like, man, when, when is this going to end? 170? Yeah. Seriously, 170? And then, uh, so, but here's the thing. It's going to, actually, and it was a short notice fight with Demers. Mm-hmm. Short notice fight, so I'm training for him. I get him on 70. I'm with my trainer at the airport. No lie, I'm about to pass out. I'm feeling like that. I'm feeling similar, similar to how I felt when I fought war. So I just said, fuck it. I went and got me some food. I ate it. I, I drunk some water, got myself back up to 73 and weighed in at 73. Fought and won the fight. And same thing with the Kessler fight. This fight is that uh, they, they're, they're building this fight a lot heavyweight fight, but actually we're fighting at a catch weight. Yeah. How, how my weight is on. My weight is already on schedule, so I'm not really, I'm not too worried about it. Yeah, you fought you fought Demers in in Quebec. What did you think about Quebec? It was okay. It was a cool. It was a cool place. It was alright, you know. Yeah, that was a pretty pretty good win. He beat Arthur yeah. Abraham, or he fought Arthur Abraham, and yeah, yeah, it's pretty good win. Yeah, but I'm just like I said, I I just had it was a short notice. I just had I didn't. It wasn't you know everything wasn't done right. Everything you know I could I would because I should have knocked Sebastian out. Mm -hmm. And that that was your last fight. Now you're scheduled right. to fight Kessler on May 19th right. in Copenhagen. How you feeling for this fight? I feel good. I feel good. My weight, my weight is low. My weight. I mean, I still feel strong. I'm on schedule. I'm doing my diet a little different for this fight, but I feel great. I'm not really. I'm, I mean, I respect Michael Kessler, but I'm not gonna say I'm just really. I'm not worried about anything he has to bring to the table. But he's. I mean, he's, he is a good fighter. He was. He's a former champion. I'm not saying it's gonna be easy. I mean, I, you know, but I'm not. I'm not gonna glorify the guy either and say, "Oh, he's this, he's that." Because when I look down at his record, he hasn't. Outside of Carl Frotch, to me, which fight I really, really lost, I really you can't just pinpoint a guy and say, "Oh, he's beating a lot of guys that any any, any other fighter couldn't have beat." I mean, mm -hmm. you get who the Brad Andrade, mm -hmm. who uh, what's the other guy from uh, Australia? What did he beat? What's his name? Um, Mundine, I mean Mundine, I mean come on, I mean you know, I mean yeah, you can give him credit for beating those guys. It's a lot, of, it's a lot of fighters who will beat those two fighters mm -hmm. outside of Frotch. So it's not, I don't really, I'm not, I'm not saying he's a bad fighter because he's not. He's a former world champion. I respect him. But like I said, I'm not going to glorify the guy and just say he's just, oh, just over, over the top. Mm -hmm. And what, what are you doing different for your diet? You said you're doing something different. What, what is it? Man, before fighting at 68, I would have to make sure I was very very low early and I would be weak all the way through through the through the through the training camp mm -hmm. fighting at you know 74 73 75 you can sit you can sit around at 85 all the way until about a week and a half two weeks before the fight and be fine mm -hmm. so that you know so you feel good through training you don't feel weak and everything while you're, while you're in training you know what I mean mm -hmm. yeah. and what's your strategy to, to fight Kessler are you working on strategy yet or uh, yeah, we have a few strategies. My strategy is my strategy is to win. I'm gonna leave it at that. Mm -hmm. if he, my, he, he, and his problem, the problem, the, the fault is not mine. The fault is gonna rest with him. He has to deal with what I have because he doesn't know who he's fighting. He's thinking that he's making a mistake and possibly thinking that he's fighting the same fight he's done the mistake. That he, he's making a grievous mistake. He's making a, he's making a mistake. If he thinks that for one second, he's making a big mistake, which I'm pretty sure he does think that. And when when did you start? Or, or 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 he wouldn't have taken the fight. Excuse me. When when did you start training for the fight? I started training about. Uh, I've been training already, man, for about five weeks. Mm hmm And what's your weight right now? Uh, I, I did the thirty day weight and yesterday. I was one eighty two, one eighty three, or one eighty two. Mm hmm So you don't have any predictions for the fight, then? Huh? Yeah, I, I, yes, I do. Yeah, I, I, an Allen Green victory. That's my prediction. That's it. <laughs> And then you uh, you got another big fight coming up at, at light heavyweight between Hopkins and Dawson. What do, what do you think is going to happen between them two? Uh, I'm picking, I mean, you know what? I respect Bernard, but enough is enough. I'm picking Dawson <laughs> to win. It's time for a lot of a, a lot of other younger guys to get in there and make a name for themselves. Hopkins is a legend. His uh, place in history is cemented. You know, he doesn't. He shouldn't want to tarnish that because at the end of the day, if he loses to Dawson, guess what? He's not going to retire. He's going to fight again to try to vindicate himself. Mm -hmm. And would you want to fight him next? Fight who? The winner? The winner or loser? Of course, right? No, I wouldn't fight the loser. After, after beating 
Okay. No, I okay. Wish. okay. And do you want the winner right away after that? Would you want Chad Dawson right away if you want? Of course. Yeah, yeah. That'd be a good fight. Of course. Unless something else, unless something else came up, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be willing to wait nine or ten months to fight him. No. Mm -hmm. I thought I would take another fight before then. Now, if we can get a fight four or five, you know, four months later, yeah. But I'm not. I'm not. I don't want to wait four or five months to fight him. You know what I mean? Yeah. What do you think of the other champion, Tavoris Cloud? What do you think of him? Uh, we have history. We fought twice. I've beaten him twice as an amateur. I think he's a very good fighter. I think he's strong. I think he's still a little green and a little has crude skills, but he's strong and he can punch. Mm -hmm. And uh, Babu Shumanov, same thing. Strong, crude, green, has a decent punch. Nathan Cleverly is unproven. Mm -hmm. I think he's, in, he's always in excellent condition, but he's unproven. Mm -hmm. And what did you think of Cloud's fight with Gabriel Campillo? Did you see that? Oh, he lost. He lost. Mm -hmm. I mean, Tavares is a friend of mine. He lost that fight. Yeah. Did you talk to him at all after that? No, I haven't. No. He, he lost that fight. So what happened between you and Cloud and the amateurs? How'd those fights go? Well, first fight, I beat him in the National Golden Gloves. Second fight, I beat him in the National Power. The second fight, I thought he won, but we were fighting under the uh, Olympic scoring, so I did. Cool. I landed more clean. I landed more clean punches than he did. Honest man. <laughs> that was yeah, cool. yeah. No, I mean, if, you know, if we were fighting on other rules, he would have won. Mm -hmm. With the yeah. fact we were fighting Olympic scoring, I, I guess I landed more clean punches with the white part of my glove, whatever. You know how you know how they do. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good fighter. He's strong. So after after you do beat Kessler, who do you want the most? The most. Man, I would love a fight with Cloud or Pascal. But, I mean, you know, like I said, ooh, any, it, I, it's, there's nobody I'm just hard up for a lot of heavyweight. Any of the major guys, mainly. Cloud, Dawson, Pascal, uh, the winner, excuse me, the winner of uh, Pascal, Cloud, the winner of uh, Hopkins and Dawson, or a guy like Shumanov, Gabriel Campillo still in there, if he, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. if he wanted to fight. Yeah. And what other what other things are you into when you're not fighting? How many kids do you have? Uh, three. I, uh, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Okay. Hold on one second. 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 Hold on Son in boxing? Nah, man, he's, nah, he's a smart guy. He wants to be a marine biologist. He's all into that stuff. I don't think he's gonna fight. Oh, that's good though. Don't don't even ruin his brain. Though. Yeah. Hey. yeah. <laughs> what do you, what do you think of the Manny uh, Manny Pacquiao Tim Bradley fight? I mean, you know, Tim's a good fighter, man. But I, to me, that there should have been so much so many so much more fights made for him at 140. I don't know if that's decision fighting a fighter like Pacquiao because I watched Tim's last fight at 47 I believe I can't remember who he fought but he looked a lot slower mm -hmm. when he fought at 47 a couple of fights back I think he looked very slow at that fight mm -hmm. and I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm against Pacquiao Tim's a good fighter but I, I don't know mm -hmm. and what about the Mayweather Cotto fight um, I think there's going to be a, a much better fight than what most people think but you know, Cotto does have some boxing skill he has a lot of boxing skill actually and the style that Mayweather fights Mayweather is a counter puncher and he'd be hard pressed to find a counter against Cotto Pacquiao did so well because Pacquiao caught him caught him in an exchange and Pacquiao throws punches and bunches he throws combinations Mayweather's not really a combination puncher not a constant combination puncher not consistent with it until he really really gets going mm -hmm. however he's not uh, he, he, I mean I'm leaning towards Floyd for the win. I don't think it's going to be the easiest, most people think. Yeah, you could, you could get into commentating after your career is over. <laughs> Good predictions, man. Good insight. And what do you want to say to your fans? Anything to say? Well, just, you know, just, just, just be looking forward to me winning the WBC Civil Belt title against Michael Gessler. That's all I can say. Yeah, that's all I got for you, buddy. On behalf of everyone here at Real Combat Media, thanks, champ, and good luck, man. I appreciate Thank it. You.